Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and on today's show we're going to do something just a tad bit different. We're going to do a comparison of the Hobart Handler 140 and the Longevity MIG Weld 140. And I'll take you through the process and show you some of the differences in machines and actually some of the things that are exactly the same. First thing I'd actually like to talk about about both of these mid-size units is for the purpose. What's the, what's the purpose of a unit like this? For myself, I already own a 250 amp MIG that's 220, um, which brings us to both of these units are 115 volt and run off of a dedicated 20 amp 115 in, in your garage or a wall plug. So that makes the size of the unit and run it with a flux core wire, uh, it makes this thing extremely portable. You can take this thing to a job site just about anywhere and plug it into to the wall and tack things up or weld with it. So portability and being able to use this in different places is, is a big plus. Um, for myself, um, a lot of you may think that I'm just a welder as how I make my living, but actually I'm a fabricator and welding is maybe 20% of that whole equation uh, depending on how it all works out. So what I wanted one of these smaller units for is when I'm doing chop tops or channeling on a, on a vehicle for their sheet metal, I wanted to be able to have something that has a nice touch that doesn't hit so hard that it blows holes in things and keeps a lot of heat and distortion out. And both of these 140s right here fit the bill on that. So that was my purpose and choice. Now let me take you through the general setup. On the left we have the Hobart Handler 140 and we have basically a wire speed that is a rheostat but the heat in this is actually the volts is tunable on a preset and I did find that the preset was right on and I didn't have a problem with it um, worked really really well like I said with both of these units you really can't tell which one that you're welding with on the longevity you have your volts that is tunable on a rheostat and your wire speed is also on a rheostat so it kind of gives you a little bit more to fine tune although that never really came into play but I still would prefer to have rheostats um, both for your wire feed and your volts uh, they both have an on off switch on the front panel um, they're both a very nice high quality MIG gun. Uh, the Hobart has maybe a slight advantage on that. It's about a foot longer. Never really came into play because of the portability with the unit, but uh, you know, sometimes that may be an issue. Um, here's the ground. That's the standard ground on longevity on just most, just about all of the units. And it's copper lined. It has a really good spring tension and holds to the work surface real well and the Hobart comes with more of a jumper cable type um, never had a problem with it not making ground but it doesn't have the same amount of spring tension and it took a little bit just to put it together so I did prefer the longevity over the Hobart on that both of these units come set up for either flux core or solid wire they both come with very nice regulators and hoses uh, set up the Hobart only comes with a flux core wire uh, where the longevity actually came with a solid wire. Um, you know, it just depends on what you're going to do, one or the other. You're going to basically have to go buy the other one that you didn't get. So for the comparisons, I used the flux core that came with the Hobart in both units and I used the solid wire that came with the longevity in both units. So we at least have a, a solid test bed to, to compare them and we'll see in the welding scenes there's really no difference between the machines as far as performance they both perform very very well the longevity does come with a slight advantage as it comes set up for an aluminum spool gun and it's set up for 120 bucks uh, or so you order that in and attaches you'll have to run an argon gas but uh, you're set up to weld aluminum now with that um, the Hobart, I didn't find any means to do that until I did a little deeper research. And the only thing that I could find with the Hobart is you could buy a card that uh, Miller makes. And you can buy Miller's spool gun and adapt it to the Hobart. Um, cost on that's about 
$700 more to add a spool gun to the Hobart. That's what I found. I uh, found that on the internet, so hopefully that's accurate for us. Um, which brings us to our next um, comparison would be a price point. Um, longevity comes in right about $330, where the Hobart came in right about $530. So I was able to purchase the Longevity with the spool gun plus shipping and everything to the house for about 150 or so cheaper than I could get the Hobart without a spool gun. Here we have the internals of the Hobart Handler 140. On the lid we have all the specifications for the setup of the different thicknesses of metal and whatever you're using. Next up we'll have the Longevity and same thing the longevity also has all the specs on the lid and inside on the longevity you see here we have a switch set up and this is set up for just regular steel function and then we'll switch this when we hook up the spool gun for aluminum welding so it's already pre-set up for that here we have the flow regulator for the Hobart Handler 140 both manufacturers supply a very nice quality regulator. Both of them now are cubic feet per hour on the outside and in the red is liters per minute. So it kind of takes all the guesswork out of things. And here we have the regulator for the longevity. It has a nice knob to dial in your pressures. And the gauges are a tad bit smaller than they are on the Hope. Here we have the back of the longevity MIG Weld 140. Basically this is our gas inlet. We have a circuit breaker push to reset. We have our 115 cord, and basically we just kind of have our input, 115 volts at 20 amps. Now to the back of the Hobart Handler 140, same thing, we have a press to set circuit breaker. We have where our gas hooks up and our 115 cord. The MIG guns that come with both of these units, this one right here is the Hobart, the one on top here is the Longevity. Um, both of them are outstanding, very positive trigger, and both work very well. The longevity does include a little clip. When you're not using it, you can clip, clip it to a workpiece or on the side of your workbench. Here we have the spool gun for the longevity unit. Carries the wire up in top, and you see we have two positive drive rollers. Comes out, works just like a standard MIG gun. Um, I didn't really think I was going to have a need for this, but uh, in testing it out, I used it to start attacking stuff up and then I ran some production welds with it and this thing runs really clean. Um, cuts my TIG time down probably over half. So it's quite an asset to have now in my arsenal. That's going to be it for part one of our comparison with the Hobart and the Longevity. Stay tuned for part two where I'm going to talk a whole lot less and weld a whole lot more. Thank you for watching Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble and I'll catch you here next time.